Once Lauren the Last, the last of the Lannister kings, gave up his crown, the Lannisters were reduced to lords and wardens of the West under the new High King of Westeros, Aegon the Conqueror. Though their vast wealth remained untouched, they did not have close ties to House Targaryen, and unlike the Tullys of Riverrun, they were too proud at once to scrabble for place beneath the Iron Throne and the new Targaryen overlords. It was not until a generation later, when Prince Aegon the Uncrowned and Princess Rhaena sought refuge from King Maegor the Cruel, who had claimed the throne from the rightful prince, that the Lannisters once again began to make a greater mark on the realm. Lord Lyman Lannister protected the prince and princess under his roof, extending guest rights and refusing all the king's demands to turn them over. Yet his lordship did not pledge his sword to the fugitive prince and princess, nor did he bestir himself until after Prince Aegon had perished and his uncle's hand during the battle beneath the god's eye. When Aegon's younger brother Jaehaerys put forward his own claim to the Iron Throne, the Lannisters rallied to his support. King Maegor's death and King Jaehaerys' coronation moved House Lannister closer to the Iron Throne, though the Valarians, the Arryns, the Hightowers, the Tullys and the Baratheons still eclipsed them in influence. Lord Tymon Lannister was present at the Great Council of 101 AC that decided the succession of King Jaehaerys I. Famously arriving with a huge retinue of 300 bannermen, men-at-arms, servants, only to be outdone by Lord Mathos Tyrell of Highgarden, who counted 500 in his retinue. The Lannisters chose to side with Prince Viserys, a choice remembered and rewarded some years later, when Viserys ascended the Iron Throne and made Lord Jason Lannister's twin brother, Sir Tyland, his master of ships. Later, Sir Tyland became master of coin for King Aegon II, and his close association with the Iron Throne and favoured position at court brought his brother, Lord Jason, into the Dance of the Dragons on the side of Aegon. As the struggle for succession continued, however, Sir Tylan suffered greatly for hiding the greater part of the crown's gold, where Rhaenyra Targaryen could not reach it when she took King's Landing, and the Lannister association with the Iron Throne proved ill-fated when the Red Kraken and his reavers fell upon the undefended Westerlands while Lord Jason marched east at King Aegon II's behest. Queen Rhaenyra's supporters met his host at the crossing of the Red Fork, where Lord Jason fell in battle, mortally wounded by the grizzled squire Pate of Longleaf. The Lannister host continued to march, winning victories under Sir Aidan Tarbach, then under Lord Leffert, before he perished at the fish feed, where his westernmen were slaughtered among the three armies. Sir Tyler Lannister, meanwhile, fell prisoner to Queen Rhaenyra after she seized King's Landing. Cruelly tortured, forced him to reveal where he had hidden the bulk of the crown's gold, Sir Tyland steadfastly refused to talk. When Aegon II and his loyalists did win back the city, he was found to have been blinded, mutilated and gelded. Yet his wits remained intact, and King Aegon retained him as master of coin. In the last days of his rule, Aegon II even sent Sir Tyland to the three cities in search of sellswords to support his cause against Rhaenyra's son, the future Aegon III, and his supporters. A regency followed the end of the fighting, since the new king, Aegon III, was only 11 years of age when he ascended the Iron Throne. In hopes of binding up the deep wounds left by the Dance of the Dragons, Sir Tyler Lannister was made Hand of the King. Perhaps those who had been his enemies deemed him too blind and broken to be a threat to them, but Sir Tyland served ably for the better part of two years before dying of the Winter Fever in 133 AC. In the years that followed, the Lannisters stood with the Targaryens against Daemon Blackfire, though the Black Dragon's rebels won victories of note in the Westerlands, especially at Lannisport and the Golden Tooth, where Sir Quinton Ball, the hot-tempered knight, renowned as the Fireball, slew Lord Lefford and sent Lord Daemon Lannister, later famed as the Grey Lion, in retreat. Following Daemon's passing in 210 AC, his son Tybalt succeeded him as Lord of Casterly Rock, only to perish himself two years later under very suspicious circumstances. A young man in his prime, Lord Tybalt left no heir of the body save for a daughter, Sorella, three years of age, whose reign as Lady Casterly Rock proved cruelly short. In less than a year, she was too dead. Whereupon the Rock and the Westerlands and all of the wealth and power of House Lannister passed to her uncle, Gerald, the late Tybalt's younger brother. A gentleman known to be exceedingly clever, Gerald had served as regent for his young niece, but the suddenness of her death at such tender age set tongues to wagging, and it was whispered widely in the West that both Lady Cyrilla and Tybalt had died at his hand. No man now living can say with certainty whether these rumours were true. 
for Gerald Lannister soon proved himself to be an exemplarily shrewd, able, fair-minded lord, greatly increasing the wealth of House Lannister, the power of Castle Rock, and the trade at Lannisport. He ruled the Westerlands for 31 years, earning the name Gerald the Golden. Yet the tragedies that befell House Lannister in the years that followed are proof enough for Lord Gerald's enemies. His beloved second wife, Lady Rowan, vanished under mysterious circumstances in 230 AC, less than a year after giving birth to his lordship's fourth and youngest son, Jason. Tywald, the eldest of his twin sons, died in battle in 233 AC while squaring for Lord Robert Rain of Castamere during the Peak Uprising. Lord Robert likewise died, leaving Sir Roger Rain, the Red Lion, his eldest son, and as his heir. The most significant death by far that stemmed from the Peak Uprising was that of King Maekar Targaryen himself, but the chaos this caused has been abundantly chronicled elsewhere. Less well known, but no less baleful, are the dire effects the battle had upon the history of the West. Tywald Lannister had long been betrothed to the Red Lion's spirited younger sister, Lady Ellen. This strong-willed and hot-tempered maiden, who had for years anticipated becoming Lady of Castle Rock, was unwilling to forsake that dream. In the aftermath of her betrothed's death, she persuaded his twin brother, Theon, to set aside his own betrothal to the daughter of Lord Rowan of Golden Grove and espouse her instead. Lord Gerald, it is said, opposed this match, but grief and age and illness had left him a pale shallow of his former self, and in the end he gave away. In 235 AC, in a double wedding at Castle Rock, Sir Tyrone Lannister took Ellen Rain to wife, while his younger brother, Titus, wed Jane Marband, a daughter of Lord Alan Marband of Ashmark. Twice a widower and ailing, Lord Gerald did not wed again, so after her marriage, Ellen of House Rain became Lady of Castle Rock in all but name. <laughs>